this uh, governor. So, um, is anybody who, would, who has a you know a cell phone or a satellite television contract will tell you uh, centralized uh, customer service can bring with it a lot of problems and um, you know people tend to be skeptical of that type of thing and with um, you know for further cuts expected in this agency and um, need expected to go up. I mean, are you confident that this is going to be able to keep up with that need in a way that's you know? you know, in a way that's easy to access and easy to deal with. Well, I think so. It's amazing how increasingly sophisticated uh, people are, not, uh, not just uh, those who may be in a high-tech business or world, not just uh, the next generation of uh, young people who are more computer conversant than I am or, or others uh, in my generation, uh, but the public at large is getting very sophisticated in terms of um, access to the World Wide Web and to services that are available through it. So I'm confident that uh, whether it's uh, on a, um, on a um, uh, laptop or an iPhone or a um, large uh, computer system, uh, Vermonters will be able to access these services. And remember, every library in the state has uh, computer access to the web. So for someone who doesn't have it personally or in his or her family, you just have to go to the local library and you can be connected and get access to these services. Well, to that point, some Vermonters may look at this and say, well, this makes sense, of course. So it's happening in the private sector. Um, why didn't it happen sooner? Well, government is not often at the leading edge of innovation, to be perfectly honest. And um, I'm pleased that we're moving forward now. Um, I need to caution you that I'm asking the legislature for some additional support for information technology through the capital bill that's meeting some resistance. But it's important to demonstrate to our legislators as well how effective a transformation like this can be. So I think it's great that we're moving forward at this point. Um, perhaps it uh, would have been great to move forward even sooner, but here we are and we've got a dedicated team of professionals here at DCF who are making this work better for Vermonters. And how long did the, this is a huge agency, how long did the Change over, you know, you're going to be great in everything in a couple of months, but how long did it take? When did you start? Uh, we, we actually started working on this uh, about two years ago. And we were partially, we, we began the call center and the application and uh, document processing center back in the, this past fall. So uh, it'll be a little over two years before we, from, from the beginning of the, process, the planning process to the full implementation. And as suggested by the first press question, there's some people, you know, every idea has some resistance to it, and it's not like it, it goes uh, entirely without objection, but, you know, this is a human scale. You just saw the call center. This is not some enormous impersonal call center off in, in either uh, Topeka or Bangalore, India. This is Vermonters serving people, and, and by grouping them together in a, still a tiny call center, it eliminates some of the hot spots and cold spots. You know, we have some offices that are so small, if a few people happen to call or a few people happen to be sick, the wait times could be extraordinary. We're grouping them together. That balances out the, the uh, surplus of staff in one office and the shortage of staff in another office. And I think in the end, will result in better customer service. Right, it's April from Hyde Park, not some somebody in a far away <laughs> office or call center out of the country. Let, let me put this in. in broader context, uh, Kristen. Remember, about eight years ago, uh, there was a national survey done about e-government, and Vermont ranked last in the United States in terms of services that were available online or uh, the types of transactions that could be done interactively. Well, I was determined to do better, and a survey that was done a year or so ago had us uh, well up into the 30s. So we've still got a ways to go, but uh, against a rising norm, uh, we've made tremendous progress, and there are other agencies that have, uh, have seen that uh, improvement as well. Uh, look at our Department of Taxes. Um, uh, Commissioner Westman gets a lot of compliments on how quickly refunds are dispersed, um, and we have an increasing percentage of our personal income taxes that are filed electronically now, and uh, that's going to continue to increase when people see the advantage to the taxpayer, to the department, and to tax preparers. And over the last few years, before we ever got into challenges for change, the Department of Taxes has reduced its uh, staff level because of automation. Uh, we now have most um, reservations for our uh, state parks made online. And I was visiting one, one park uh, uh, summer before last down in Windsor County, and the 
park manager said, oh, this has been a godsend because it used to be uh, I'd be out uh, uh, cleaning up some brush or fixing a, a post or, or, or a fence and I'd hear the phone ring and I'd have to run into the cabin and um, take a reservation and write it down in our, uh, our paper calendar. And now it's all done centrally with the Department of Forest and Parks online and those folks can do their jobs. Uh, I got my fishing license online each of the last few uh, years from our Fish and Wildlife Department. So we're doing a lot of things. Uh, but we have to keep doing more if we're going to be competitive and deliver services as effectively as we can. Do you expect the cost savings? Yes, and uh, Stephen, I want to talk to this, but there, there's a demonstrable savings uh, from this uh, uh, process. Do you want to comment on that? Sure. Um, with the advent of the full, the full rollout of the system, we will have 30 fewer staff in the Economic Services Division, which is about 300 employees. So it's about a 10% staff reduction um, initially at the time of, uh, as we implement, and that's about a $2 million figure um, that, will go, that will be ongoing. I was asked previously about the investment that was required to, to do the process and the technology. And it was, uh, I think it's around $2.8 million before we got done. Um, and it's important to state that uh, about a million of that came from a grant from the federal government to help us specifically do this relative to the three squares program. Um, but the uh, other money was earned by our staff, some of whom are here, Renee Richardson, back in the, the green shirt, although I guess everybody's in the green shirt. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, the, the, all the staff around the state who, do, um, who were doing food stamps at that time uh, earned bonus checks three years in a row uh, to the tune of, it was over 1.5, maybe 1.7 million, something like that. So all of the money that went into this investment came from the federal government and a lot of it earned by as bonuses by um, our staff. So it was a, it's a modest uh, investment but for an ongoing return. And this is, and I would just say that's the beginning. I mean, you can begin to see the potential um, you know, for example, um, the application processing center, I'm, I'm worried over the next two months, Marcia, because once every district office is coming through that, another th a third growth in the next two months, we will be at, I think, the ultimate uh, paper processing time that we will ever be at, because the assumption is as soon as the web becomes available, you will begin to see the paper uh, flow drop fairly substantially, and you know, who knows, three years from now, that we may not have to have as robust an application processing center. So at some level, what we're doing is creating the p potential for um, significant increased savings over time and efficiency. Yeah, and as, as both the governor and Steve says, this all informed what we're doing in challenges for change. Uh, this all happened way before there was challenges for change, but having this experience behind us, having the advantage of what they've done here and, and what's been done in other areas, then we can move quickly to replicate it in other parts of state government. It's not that we have to wait two years before the next application comes online uh, because of all the work that's been done here. It's not that we have to reinvest millions of dollars to bring more applications online uh, because of all the work that's done here. So by coincidence, but lucky coincidence for Vermont and, and by their dedication, at the time when we have so much challenge, we've also done an awful lot of very good groundwork and this is a very tangible example of it. And with the ease of uh, access and all, do you expect uh, higher utilization, therefore higher expense from the state? Um, I, I, don't, I don't expect that easier, easier access will result in substantially, uh, substantial increases um, in terms of the programs that largely are state funded. The, uh, the three squares, the, the food stamp program, uh, we get strong urging from the federal government to make access easier and easier, particularly for um, older Vermonters who have been reluctant to access uh, that particular benefit. So there's continued encouragement and, in fact, bonuses from the federal government if we continue uh, that expansion. So I would expect for people who don't, didn't want to drive to a district office and apply for the food stamp benefit, um, we may continue to see um, an increase, but that is 100% federally uh, reimbursed.